This video is brought to you by Arm & Hammer. When you f**k up and you have to clean up your mess. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode. So in the last couple days I've been sick. I'm just like getting over a fever right now. So bear with me if my nose or whatever, if I kind of sound a little funky. Um, but in today's video, we're going to be working on the mini transmission and the engine. We're going to be separating both of them. We're going to be taking a couple parts off of the mini motor so we can mount the motor on our engine stand or the engine on the engine stand. So we're going to be separating the two. We've got a couple components to take off of both of them so that we can actually get this mini project going a little bit more. So in the last video, we removed the mini engine from the engine bay. And in this video, we're going to be going one step further so we can build this little bad boy up and get it ready for springtime. Because I want to get this thing going and then once I take all these components off, that means that I can put better and stronger internals in the motor to make it so that I can withstand the extra power and boost that my turbocharger, my upgraded turbocharger, is going to be feeding this motor. So let's get right into it. I've got a couple things to take off first and we're going to start off with working on the oil system. So if we still had the motor and trans inside the engine bay, we would basically be looking at it from the front. So if you come down to the bottom midsection of it, between the transmission and the motor, you'll see that we have these components right here. Now if we take a look at this little guy down here in the bottom, this is an auxiliary coolant pump. And this is what actually feeds the turbocharger of coolant. So we've got this component here to replace and remove, along with this line here, also for the coolant. And if we come up to the top a little bit higher, you can see that we've got this little sad face kind of thing. This this is the oil cooler. We've got our oil cartridge right here. This is where we put our oil filter in there. And we also have the oil return line and the oil feed line for the turbocharger. Now it is crucial to replace these with new pieces whenever you're doing this process. Since both of these lines are notorious for getting oil buildup found on the sides of them, you don't want that to flake off and then clog up your turbo and then starve it of oil. So by spending like 50 bucks or whatever it costs to replace both of these lines, you're going to be doing yourself some preventative maintenance and you're to make sure that your turbo is going to be well fed with fresh oil and fresh coolant. So I'm going to be replacing all these components with better stuff down the road, but that's going to be for the installation procedure. So I'm going to first start off by removing the coolant pump, the auxiliary one down here, and it's just held in place by a eight millimeter bolt found up at the top on top of this little connector. And then after that, there's going to be a few Torx bolts that are holding the oil cooler up to the block. And then we're going to go from there and keep removing a couple more components here so we can take the engine and trans and separate them. So using my DeWalt impact driver, I'm going to be taking out the eight millimeter bolt that's securing the bracket along with the external coolant pump up to the transmission. So once you remove them, you can set both of them aside. Next up comes removing the five Torx bolts that are holding the oil cooler and the oil filter onto the engine. So there's going to be one bolt found on each one of the corners of the oil cooler and there's going to be another one found in the middle of the oil cooler. Now I couldn't exactly see the one in the middle on the bottom at first and for that reason I wasn't able to remove it here at this point. Now I moved on and removed the bottom bolt for the oil feed line. Now that goes directly from the block up to the line and that goes towards the turbo. So when you take it off, remember that there's going to be a bolt, a copper washer, the line, and then another copper washer after that between the line and the block. Be sure to take all of them out because we're going to be replacing them later once we have to reinstall this back on the cart. Next, using a needle nose plier, you can remove the oil drain line that's coming from the turbocharger. So this part here goes right to the oil cooler, and then you can do the exact same thing to the coolant line that's going to be coming off of the turbocharger. Using a set of needle nose pliers, you can take them off and set them aside. Now when you take off the last bolt for the oil cooler, keep in mind that there's going to be oil and coolant found behind here. So as soon as you take this off, there is going to be extra fluid that's going to come out of the block. So just be careful and if you can put a drain pan underneath the engine, by all means do it. There's going to be multiple O-rings found on each one of these seals, so be sure to either leave them in there or take them all off, just so that you can remember when you have to reinstall everything back together that you need to buy new ones. You shouldn't be reusing the old O-rings when you're putting anything back together. They're not expensive by any means, and when you buy new ones, you're going to be ensuring you have a proper seal. Now when you're doing this process, if you're doing this on the ground, be sure to have some kitty litter that you can just put down on the ground so you can pick up all the extra fluid and whatever that's fallen. Let it soak up all the old oil and coolant, and then you can pick it up with a dustpan and a broom. 
Next up comes removing the starter. So there's going to be two Torx bolts that are threading through the starter, through the engine block, into the transmission. And it's important to take it out because the threaded part of the bolt is in the trainee, and if you don't take it out, you won't be able to separate the transmission from the block. So take it out, set it aside, and you'll be able to inspect it also at this point to see if there's any excessive wear. Okay, so at this point we're almost there. There are going to be seven bolts that are securing the transmission up to the engine. So there's going to be one Torx bolt right there, another one down there. Now if we move to the opposite side, there's gonna be two additional ones found on the top of the transmission. And then there's going to be three more on this side. So we have one, two, and then underneath there, can you see that, there is number three. So once you take all seven of those out, you have to be careful when separating the engine and transmission so that the transmission comes out straight. So I have the tranny and the engine both level. So once I disconnect everything, nothing really should happen, but it's good to note that once you have it level, once you disconnect the bolts, the transmission and engine aren't going to move. So we're going to begin by removing the two bolts that are securing the engine to the transmission. And these two are found on the engine side of it. Next up comes removing the three same Torx bolts but found on the opposite side of the motor. Instead of the head of the bolt to be found on the engine side, this is found on the transmission side. So you can then remove and set each one of these three aside. Following that, we're going to be finishing up with the last two bolts that are securing the transmission up to the engine. So set all these aside, label them, and then we can remove the transmission from the motor. Now when you're removing the transmission from the block, there's going to be two guide pins that are attached to the engine that are going to align the transmission so it can properly be lined up onto the motor. So that means that removing the transmission has to come out perfectly straight. If you don't remove it straight, if you try to twist it, it's not going to come out. So using two little pry bars, once you separate it off of those guide pins, you can pull the entire transmission off the motor. Okay guys, so this is really good news. Um, the transmission is apart from the engine and I'm super pumped. Now I've got to go make a trip to a local store of mine so I can go get some longer hardware so I can mount up the engine up to um, my engine stand. Um, <coughs> now being sick that kind of put me out of breath even though it shouldn't have but now I still need to go ahead and disassemble the clutch that's still attached to the flywheel because once I get it at that point it can then be mounted onto the engine stand. But I've got to go make a trip down to Fastenal, which is a local like hardware store. Um, and then I need to find some longer bolts so that I can thread um, the bolt from the engine stand into the threaded part on here. So the bolts that we removed that were connecting the engine and the transmission together, we need to get those same thread bolts, but longer so that it can fit in there and in there and it can hold it up. Now, ideally I'm looking for around a grade eight bolt it should be strong enough, a hardened grade eight bolt, it should be strong enough for me to support the weight of the engine with just using four bolts. But yeah, I'm gonna have a little snack, hopefully I feel a little bit better, go in a nice warm car, and uh, I'll be back once I have those bolts. So nearly two hours later in four different stores, I was able to find the bolts that I needed. So if you guys do wanna go through this procedure, if you guys have a mini, you are going to need an M10 by 1.5 by 100 bolt. So it's 100 millimeters in length, which is close to four inches, which is exactly what we need so that we can put our bolt through the engine stand, through the engine stand like that, and we have enough material that it's gonna actually grab onto the motor and support it. Before we can put that there, we first need to do a little bit more work down here. To remove the pressure plate, we have to remove the six E10 bolts that are surrounding the outside of the pressure plate. So I'm gonna be using my impact driver to take them out. Now be sure that when you're doing this, you support the pressure plate because as soon as you remove the bolts, it will fall to the ground. And then last but not least, we have our last one right here. And then once that's out, we can take this and lift it out. And you can see that we have our clutch plate right there. So that is the clutch material. So from the looks of it, we still have a decent amount of material left on here. But since I'm gonna be going with a little bit more power for this motor, I'm going to need a stronger clutch that's going to be able to withstand that extra power. Now next up, we have to remove the dual mass flywheel. So that's this entire huge chunk of everything you see on here. So this is a dual mass flywheel and there's springs found on the inside of it. So this is what actually gives a little bit of wiggle room 
when you use your clutch. So if you're rough on it, there are springs in here. It's there so it can absorb some of that vibration. To take each one of these six Torx bolts out, you're going to need a T55 Torx bit. So I thought I'd be able to use a regular impact driver to get it out, but it turns out these bolts are not only in there and torqued onto the crankshaft pretty tight, but there's also blue Loctite on there. So after I tried using my impact driver, I realized that it wasn't working. So I switched to hand tools and I realized at that point, the crankshaft can still spin. I then switched back to my impact driver and it broke the adapter for the 3 8 bit. So I was like, okay, screw this. So I went to my half inch big impact gun and it was able to remove these things without an issue. However, if you do want to use hand tools only, there is an attachment and a tool that you can buy that prevents the crankshaft from spinning. And it just holds the crankshaft in place so you can use a breaker bar to break each one of these bolts loose. But as soon as you remove each one of these bolts, you can then remove the dual mass flywheel from the crankshaft. Now, if you do plan on removing this yourself, you do want to mark up where the flywheel is in relation to the crankshaft. So I'm just gonna be cleaning off some of this dust. And you wanna have it so that you can properly reinstall the flywheel back onto the exact same position of the crankshaft. Because sometimes the crankshaft will be mounted and balanced with the flywheel. And after that you can remove the last bolt that's holding on the flywheel onto the crank. At this point, there's nothing else that's holding and securing the dual mass flywheel onto the crank. So if it's a little stuck, you might need to use a hammer to pop it off. Now in this case, I'm going to be using a brass hammer so it doesn't damage the flywheel. You're just going to tap on the back side of the flywheel. If you have to, turn the crankshaft and hit it again. Now at this point, you're trying to just rock it back and forth so that the flywheel can come off of the crank. Last but not least, we need to remove the entire oil filter housing from the block so that we can secure the block up to the engine stand. So there's going to be a couple bolts securing it in place. Once you take them out, a little bit of oil might come out of there, but just be sure to take off each one of the gaskets and then set the entire oil filter housing aside. So next up comes installing this guy here. And this is what is a part of the engine stand. And this is what is going to attach these arms up to the block itself. So using this adapter and those four bolts that we went to go pick up, we're gonna be able to install this entire piece on the block. And that's gonna support the weight of the engine so we can have it suspended on our engine stand. So I began by installing each one of the extended bolts that we purchased to each one of the adapter fingers. So I attached two of them on each side of the engine so that the weight will be properly supported and distributed from left to right. So I only installed them only kind of hand tight so that the fingers would be able to move up and down so we can then install our adjustable mounting head up to it. So that means now installing each one of the larger bolts that came with the engine stand to secure it up to the fingers. Each one of these guys need to be bolted up. After the adjustable head is connected, we can grab a torque wrench and torque up each one of these extended bolts to the torque spec that the transmission will be attached to the engine. So for my car, it's 28 foot pounds of torque. Now the reason why I'm properly torquing it to that sequence is because the engine is made out of aluminum and I don't want to either strip or damage the engine block because that won't be fun to replace. After each one of the extended bolts are torqued up to the fingers and the blocks, you can then go ahead and tighten up the bolts that are securing the fingers to the adjustable mounting head. Now after that, you can then lift your engine, raise it up in the air, and then we can slide it onto our engine stand. Now by doing it this way, we're going to have it properly secured and we're not going to be risking the engine falling on us as soon as we relieve the pressure from the engine hoist. Before we go ahead and let loose all the tension that's held on the actual engine hoist, we're going to make sure that the engine stand is good, there's no slack, and all the bolts have some meat on them. So you can see on this side how there's enough material that goes through all the way to the other side of the nut, and the same thing for here. So this part here is threaded, and you can see it went all the way through, and everything seems to be fine. So since those are all torqued up, and these guys here are super tight, what we can finally do now is we can let loose of all the pressure that's on the engine hoist, take off of all these chains, and then the engine is going to be on our stand. And then at that point, we can continue to work on the engine and disassemble it, and we can actually get some pretty good angles considering we can go around pretty much anywhere we want on the engine. Because in the car, there was a part of the body that was right here, so getting to work on any part in here is nearly impossible. So with it like this, you can see that, look at how cracked 
um, my serpentine belt is. You can see that a lot of this stuff needs work and we can start disassembling this as soon as that is done. Now the reason I went with these ratcheting straps instead of a chain is that this is not only stronger than a chain, but it's also really nice and easy to work with. Considering this is a fabric, it's a nylon. So it's not only bendable, but it's not gonna rust on you and it's not gonna deteriorate after like five years. So with this kind of setup, you can choose however long of an extension that you want going from the top of the hoist to the actual engine. So with this, we can bring down the slack and tighten it up, or we can extend it to whatever we want. But considering we're done now, we can take that off. We can let that loose. We can take the little clips that we have on the side of the motor. We can take those off. And all this stuff is rated for more than the weight of my vehicle. So if I wanted to, I could tow and hold my entire weight of the vehicle, the whole car, with this or my strap. So this stuff is rated for 3,000 pounds. My Mini, fully wet with gas, oil, all that stuff, and me in it, came in at 2,600 pounds. So something like this is more than strong enough to hold an engine. But at this point, we're pretty much done. So there comes this. I need to disassemble this and remove the strap because I had to loop this guy here, this back one, I had to loop that around the motor mount to get it out. But you can see there's nothing that's holding the engine onto the stand. So we're pretty much done. Now I'm gonna be straight with you guys. The motor's out and it was a decent amount of work. A lot of people underestimate how much work is actually involved in taking any kind of motor out of your car. Now obviously some cars are gonna be easier than others, but even still, it's not something to joke around about. There's a reason why it takes mechanics a full day if not more to do a full whatever service when the engine has to come out. Now keep in mind that the mechanic when he's working, he doesn't have to do any kind of video like what I'm doing now. So he doesn't have to put the time into talking to a camera, getting the correct angle and doing all that kind of extra stuff when that isn't needed when he's just working on the motor. So in the next video we're gonna hopefully find the source of the problem with this misfire in cylinder number four. So I'm gonna start tearing down more of the engine, take the head off, inspect the insides, inspect everything and we're gonna go from there. If you guys want to pick up any of the products that I use today from the tools to whatever check the description box. I make it super easy for you guys with links directing you right to Amazon. If you guys have any other questions for that matter throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be more than happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.